A timeless landscape, clues buried in the past, and discoveries that can build a better understanding of our climate. Jehong Cole Dai, a professor of chemistry at South Dakota State University, can you fix the scale? has embraced the challenges of fieldwork in the Antarctic environment. Working in a laboratory at SDSU, Cole Dye utilizes equipment and expertise that few others have, and he has found evidence of a previously undocumented volcanic eruption. Why does a 200-year-old volcano blast matter today? Scientists already know that a large volcanic eruption, Tambora, in 1815, cooled our planet. Tambora has been credited with causing the so-called year without a summer in 1816. The volcanic eruption identified by Cold Eye is thought to have taken place in 1809 and may provide additional information about this type of global temperature shift. You want to set up the... By looking at ice cores that offer a chemical timeline of atmospheric events, Cold Eye says we can learn how naturally occurring events impact climate change. To sort of know what we're going to be facing uh, in the future, we need to be able to predict what the climate will be uh, next 50 years, 100 years. To do that, we really have to understand how nature works on its own in terms of climate change. One of the reasons that the climate change climate changes naturally is uh, because of volcanic eruptions. Usually a big volcanic uh, eruption goes off. It puts all these uh, chemicals in the atmosphere that, that act as a sort of a reflector that uh, reflects some of the sunlight so that the earth usually cools off. Cold Eye and graduate research assistant Allison Linsicki have moved and melted tons of ice core samples from the Antarctic and Greenland in order to find these chemicals. If you come over here, I'll hand this to you. In their research, they hunted down specific evidence. Sulfur isotopes and materials changed by exposure to the stratosphere level of our atmosphere. Finding these microscopic substances in ice meant that they came from a volcanic eruption large enough to send sulfur and other materials high into our atmosphere above the clouds. We took about five tons of ice, which for chemistry is a, a big amount of sample. And for each volcanic event that we analyzed um, with the sulfur isotopes, uh, we had to get at least two samples per event. and the size of the sample at the end after all the conversions and um, basically boiling them down was about a quarter of the size of your pinky nail after a couple tons of ice. It's kind of a challenge to go through it and figure out, you know, how am I going to do this? How do I get contamination out of this? You know, you've got to be very cautious about every little step of the way and very, very cautious about losing some of your sample when you've got such a little amount at the very end. For SDSU students like Lansicki, an opportunity to work with a scientist like Cole Dye is an incredibly valuable experience. Conducting research in a specialized laboratory with a leading researcher offers a world-class level of professional training and preparation for a successful career in science. We use ion chromatography. Uh, we, we have eight running in tandem, four for anions, four for cations. And with our system, we take our full meter of core and we cut it into a quarter, slice off the ends to get uh, the contamination off, and then we melt it and run it through those instruments. Cold Eye's work is seen as building the reputation of SDSU as a research institution, and while making valuable contributions to the overall body of knowledge about climate change, also benefiting the growing science infrastructure in South Dakota. Cold Eye worked with colleagues to conduct research funded in part by the National Science Foundation. NSF infrastructure geared to support Antarctic research made gathering samples in such a challenging environment possible. If you're out there, um, you need food, you need fuel. Um, sometimes you need people to help you to move things. Uh, they are um, specialized companies that contract with the NSF and, and do that type of support for our projects.
Cold Eye says that thorough planning is perhaps the most important part of undertaking research efforts in such a hostile weather environment. And while it may be more common to think about research chemists in lab coats than in heavy-duty parkas, Cold Eye says that new ideas can form at both the ice cap and the lab bench. When things get hard, um, I tend to think about, you know, what we would be able to do with the ice samples once we get them <laughs> into our lab. Um, it's very exciting to think about the, the, the dis discovery you can, uh, um, you can make with the ice samples. And so that makes all the hard work worth the effort. For South Dakota State University, I'm Tammy Watson.